Well, welcome back to Pella. We're here for round two of field work in prep for a timber harvest that we're going to be doing here on the Pella project. We actually have timber harvesting equipment on the way, so it's time to get in the woods, get the paint guns out, uh, get some of the boundaries and some of the timber mark that we need to cut so that the people operating the equipment know what they're cutting and what they're leaving. So Ryan, as we're looking at the timber prescriptions for this stand, what are we going to be doing in here as far as painting lines and painting individual trees? Kind of what's your thought as you're walking into this woods? Yeah, so the first step we're going to do is there's an aspen clone, a nice little aspen, aspen pocket on top of the hill. The northern hardwoods down below it. And we're going to delineate the line, the cut boundary from our aspen clear cut to our single tree northern hardwood selection cut down below. And that's going to be important because that aspen clear cut is going to be basically wiped clean and then we're going to do some individual tree selection on the other side of that, right? Yeah, correct. All right, so we're going to get in here. We're going to start painting these lines. We'll kind of take you on the walk through here, explain to you what we're doing and why we're doing it. And uh, we'll have that timber harvesting equipment in here before you know it. All right, so after we've studied aerial photos and took the walk about with the landowner, we're doing the field work and looking at the individual trees we're marking. Here you can see our, our vertical blue, the long vertical blue marks designate the cut boundary between the clear cut to my left here and then the northern hardwoods down the hill. And uh, this is where you look at each individual tree and the landowner really gets to get the paintbrush out and paint where they want those lines in their woods. So one of the considerations in timber management is invasive species and, and issues that we have in our northern hardwood stands. Here behind me I've marked a couple ash trees. We're here on the Pella project, emerald ash borers knocking on the door in the neighborhood here. So we're going to remove these ash trees before the emerald ash borer gets them and they have no value to us. Extract them and we have a few maple trees next to us of a good seed source that we can hopefully get some maple seeded into the ground here with that hole in the canopy and, and encourage a different species besides the ash to, to regenerate. So we've designated our, the cut boundary between our, our single tree selection and our clear cut in the aspen stand. As we get into our northern hardwoods in the single tree selection marked harvest, the first thing we want to do is remove the trees that are high risk, poor quality. Great example of this ash right behind me, and it has what we call epicormic branching coming down the trunk of the tree, what that is a sign of is the tree is stressed and it's going to put as much resource into branches, creating photosynthesis as it can, but that tree's on its way out. It's going to die, so we want to get it out of the woods. All right, so I'm following Ryan through this project right now as he's marking timber and we came across an area right here where I'm standing that was kind of an on the ground, on the fly decision that Ryan saw uh, an opportunity here to regenerate this forest a little bit differently. So behind me, We've got a pocket of some high risk ash, but right in the middle of them, there's a little clone of about six or seven aspen trees that are degrading pretty quickly. So we made the decision to come in here. We marked off a clear cut line of a little over a quarter of an acre where we're gonna take all of the ash out. We're gonna rely on these six aspen trees that are left to shoot up sprouts from here and regenerate aspen into an area that was predominantly ash trees today. The other thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna leave this area just to grow natively. The other clear cut area that we made a little bit earlier, we're actually gonna go in and we're gonna fence that area off and we'll be able to compare the regeneration in that clear cut that's fenced versus the clear cut here that we're just gonna leave native and we'll see what happens between the two of them long term. So a question that we get often when we start going in and we harvest trees and we start talking about harvesting high risk trees, a lot of times landowners will look at us and say, geez, how do I know what's gonna come into my woods after we do this? Behind me, we have a really good example of that. This is an area of regenerating soft maple. Now this maple came into a canopy gap that happened natively. There were some trees that fell down in here and, and whatnot over time. But you can see this didn't regenerate into, into new ash growth. It regenerated into maple. So as we go through and we take out some of the ash pockets in here that we're looking at as, as Ryan's marking this woods, we have a great deal of confidence that this woods has the capability to generate maple at a pretty high stem count and will preserve the health of this woods for the long term. We're here for phase two, or maybe it's phase three, of our Pella project um, and the property development that we're doing here. It's actually the first day of cutting wood. So if you go back to Pella part one, uh, we talked about laying out the plan, actually marking the timber to be cut. And now today we actually have the processor here. Uh, it's behind me just getting started, um, putting wood on the ground. So uh, we're gonna walk you through some of the process that we use why sorting wood is important, uh, kind of how we lay trees down to make this a neat and clean project, uh, and give you a picture of what this is gonna look like in the future. 
So a few weeks ago, we came in here and our goal was to mark the areas that we were going to cut. And we marked this woods in two different ways. The area that we're standing in now is going to be a clear cut area that's primarily popple. Now, the one thing we wanted to touch on here is when you start doing a clear cut, not all wood in the clear cut is equal. So I wanna just point out a few things in this little area that I'm standing in that are important to you when you start cutting wood so you understand the different values of the wood that you have and why certain wood goes in certain piles. If you look behind me here, we've got a tree that's you know roughly seven inches in diameter and a seven inch tree is going to go in a pulpwood pile. Probably the least valuable wood uh, that you have, um, but it's gonna make up the majority of the wood in, in most cases that's going to come out. So you know those trees that are you know six, seven, maybe up to eight inches if they're poor quality, are gonna go in a pulpwood pile. Over here to my left, we've got a big uh, popple tree. Now this is a little bit bigger tree, and this popple for the first, I don't know, 30 or 40 feet of this tree is significantly bigger. This is a nine, oh, maybe almost 10 inch tree, and this is gonna go in a boltwood pile. Um, so you're gonna have popple boltwood, and the top of that is gonna go into a popple pulp pile, which have a little bit less value. So it's important as you're cutting this, you have an operator that knows the difference in species of trees, also knows the difference in size of trees to make sure that they go in the right pile. The last thing that's important as we look in this clear cut is gonna be things like this tree to my right. Now this is a small tree, it doesn't have any merchantable value at all. However, if we don't cut it, this is gonna provide a lot of shade and what that shade is going to do is gonna prevent a lot of the regrowth that we're looking for here. So what we'd like to be able to do is just cut this tree chunk it up and we're going to leave this tree on the ground to maximize the sunlight to get as much popple regeneration in this area as we can. So if you've ever been on a logging job before and you've looked at a slash pile that's sitting right next to a pile that's going to get picked up by the forwarder, you've probably wondered why in the world did they leave that piece of wood and why is that one not getting taken out? I'm, I'm losing money here. Well, at the end of the day, when you look at a piece of wood like this, this diameter wise probably fits the bill to be marketable, but if you look at the entirety of what's left here, there's a big crotch in this tree. And that processor just cannot pull that through and break that up into a part to get yourself a 100 inch long piece of wood that can go in the pulp pile. So you want a logger that's going to be meticulous and maximize your value, but you also have to understand when you're looking at the slash piles at the end of the day, some of this wood, even though it meets the diameter, there's a lot of characteristics about it that don't make it suitable to go to the mill. So we just came off that birch pile where we were talking about having to leave some of that slash in the woods because of that, that fork that was in the tree. We just cut a tree down here. It's an ash tree that's got a really, really big fork in it. We're going to be able to take that fork of that tree, cut it off, and actually make it into two pieces of pulp. So when you've got an operator in the woods, having one that knows the difference between leaving a piece of wood in the woods and being able to cut it to get it out, it's going to maximize your value. It's kind of a no one to hold them, no one to fold them kind of thing. All right, so we're getting close to the end of this Aspen clear cut on the hill above me. And we're getting close to the bottom side blue painted line here. And we're starting to think about how can we use these larger trees as a way to steer deer through this clear cut into areas that we're gonna be hanging deer stands. So behind me here, you can see I've got a big poplar, I've got a big ash over on this side. And what we did is we fell these trees to the downhill side and we're gonna take the logs out of them that are merchantable. But we cut these trees down in such a way that we can leave those tops staggered going up the hill so that as the deer approach this area, they're gonna to have to choose one way or the other. We can strategically put a stand site on the other end and hopefully we'll have made better use out of these tops than just simply laying them on the ground. We've actually used them now to direct deer in the areas that we want them to be. So behind me is this spruce clear cut area that we're using to expand the existing food plot that was here when this project started. I wanna to touch on uh, how we came about cutting this area and some of the thoughts that we're thinking about as we're doing this work. Behind me you can see the the beginning results of the clear cut and when we came in here to do this we didn't just show up one morning and say let's just cut on all the trees so we can put a bulldozer in here and expand the food plot. We actually thought about how can we organize the wood and the tops to make the cutting uh, go quicker and two to make the dozer work go faster once the dozer comes in. So you can see it's a pretty neat uh, area it's pretty well organized we've got the tops in, in certain piles we've got the logs in certain piles, leaving the majority of the stumps exposed so that when the dozer comes in, he's not searching for stumps and whatever to try to push them out. So it'd be very easy to come in here, just cut this down, lay it down flat, and let somebody else worry about the dozer work. But in this case, we're the ones worried about the dozer work. So we're thinking about the totality of the project. How is the whole project gonna go faster if we start uh, by doing it right on the front end? 
So we hope you've enjoyed the ride so far here in Pella. We're getting awful close to, uh, to the end of stage two of this project. We've got the aspen clear cut basically completed. We're gonna take down a few more of the larger trees in there to open up some more canopy around it, create a little bit more log value. Uh, we've got about a quarter acre is all we've got left to cut here in the white pine and spruce. And once that is done, we'll have the dozer in here. We'll work on getting this cleaned up and ready to go. So we'll have this in time to plant uh, for a good fall forage uh, food plot in here in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for joining us to this point. Look for the next Pella Project videos coming uh, over the next several weeks. I'd invite you to like and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.